Section 3 of Aesop's Fables The Old Man and the Three Young Men As an old man was planting a tree, three young men came along and began to make sport of him, saying, It shows your foolishness to be planting a tree at your age. The tree cannot bear fruit for many years, while you must very soon die. What is the use of your wasting your time in providing pleasure for others to share long after you are dead? The old man stopped in his labor and replied, Others before me provided for my happiness, and it is my duty to provide for those who shall come after me. As for life, who is sure of it for a day? You may all die before me. The old man's words came true. One of the young men went on a voyage at sea and was drowned. Another went to war and was shot, and the third fell from a tree and broke his neck. We should not think wholly of ourselves, and we should remember that life is uncertain. THE LION AND THE FOX A fox entered into partnership with a lion on the pretense of becoming his servant. Each undertook his proper duty in accordance with his own nature and powers. The fox discovered and pointed out the prey. The lion sprang on it and seized it. The fox soon became jealous of the lion, carrying off the lion's share, and said that he would no longer find out the prey, but would capture it on his own account. The next day he attempted to snatch a lamb from the fold, but fell himself a prey to the huntsman and his hounds. Keep to your place if you would succeed. THE HORSE AND THE STAG The horse had the plain entirely to himself. A stag intruded into his domain and shared his pasture. The horse, desiring to revenge himself on the stranger, requested a man, if he were willing, to help him in punishing the stag. The man replied that if the horse would receive a bit in his mouth and agree to carry him, he would contrive very effectual weapons against the stag. The horse consented, and allowed the man to mount him. From that hour he found that, instead of obtaining revenge on the stag, he had enslaved himself to the service of man. He who seeks to injure others often injures only himself. THE LION AND THE DOLPHIN A lion, roaming by the seashore, saw a dolphin lift up its head out of the waves, and asked him to contract an alliance with him, saying that of all the animals they ought to be best friends, since the one was the king of beasts on the earth, and the other was the sovereign ruler of all the inhabitants of the ocean. The dolphin gladly consented to this request. Not long afterwards the lion had a combat with a wild bull, and called on the dolphin to help him. The dolphin, though quite willing to give him assistance, was unable to do so, as he could not by any means reach the land. The lion abused him as a traitor. The dolphin replied, Nay, my friend, blame not me, but nature which, while giving me sovereignty of the sea, has quite denied me the power of living upon the land. Let every one stick to his own element. THE MICE IN COUNCIL The mice summoned a council to decide how they might best devise means for obtaining notice of the approach of their great enemy, the cat. Among the many plans devised, the one that found most favor was the proposal to tie a bell to the neck of the cat, that the mice, being warned by the sound of the tinkling, might run away and hide themselves in their holes at his approach. But when the mice further debated who among them should thus bell the cat, there was no one found to do it. Let those who propose be willing to perform. THE CAMEL AND THE ARAB An Arab camel-driver, having completed the lading of his camel, asked him which he would like best, to go uphill or downhill. The poor beast replied, not without a touch of reason, Why do you ask me? 
Is it that the level way through the desert is closed? The Fighting Cocks and the Eagle Two game cocks were fiercely fighting for the mastery of the farmyard. One at last put the other to flight. The vanquished cock skulked away and hid himself in a quiet corner. The conqueror, flying up to a high wall, flapped his wings and crowed exultingly with all his might. An eagle, sailing through the air, pounced upon him and carried him off in his talons. The vanquished cock immediately came out of his corner and ruled henceforth with undisputed mastery. Pride goes before destruction. The Boys and the Frogs Some boys, playing near a pond, saw a number of frogs in the water and began to pelt them with stones. They killed several of them when one of the frogs, lifting his head out of the water, cried out, Pray stop, my boys. What is sport to you is death to us. What we do in sport often makes great trouble for others. The Crab and Its Mother A crab said to her son, Why do you walk so one-sided, my child? It is far more becoming to go straight forward. The young crab replied, Quite true, dear mother, and if you will show me the straight way, I will promise to walk in it. The mother tried, in vain, and submitted without remonstrance to the reproof of her child. Example is more powerful than precept. The Wolf and the Shepherd a wolf followed a flock of sheep for a long time, and did not attempt to injure one of them. The shepherd at first stood on his guard against him as against an enemy, and kept a strict watch over his movements. But when the wolf, day after day, kept in the company of the sheep and did not make the slightest effort to seize them, the shepherd began to look upon him as a guardian of his flock rather than as a plotter of evil against it and when the occasion called him one day into the city, he left the sheep entirely in his charge. The wolf, now that he had the opportunity, fell upon the sheep and destroyed the greater part of the flock. The shepherd, on his return, finding his flock destroyed, exclaimed, I have been rightly served. Why did I trust my sheep to a wolf? An evil mind will show in evil action sooner or later. THE MAN AND THE LION A man and a lion traveled together through the forest. They soon began to boast of their respective superiority to each other in strength and prowess. As they were disputing, they passed a statue carved in stone which represented a lion strangled by a man. The traveler pointed to it and said, See, there? how strong we are, and how we prevail over even the king of beasts. The lion replied, This statue was made by one of you men. If we lions knew how to erect statues, you would see the man placed under the paw of the lion. One story is good till another is told. The Ox and the Frog An ox drinking at a pool trod on a brood of young frogs and crushed one of them to death. The mother, coming up and missing one of her sons, inquired of his brothers what had become of him. He is dead, dear mother, for just now a very huge beast with four great feet came to the pool and crushed him to death with his cloven heel. The frog, puffing herself out, inquired if the beast was as big as that in size. Cease, mother, to puff yourself out, said her son and do not be angry, for you would, I assure you, sooner burst than successfully imitate the hugeness of that monster. Impossible things we cannot hope to attain, and it is of no use to try. THE BIRDS, THE BEASTS, AND THE BAT The birds waged war with the beasts, and each party were by turns the conquerors. A bat, fearing the uncertain issues of the fight, always betook himself to that side which was the strongest. When peace was proclaimed, his deceitful conduct was apparent to both the combatants. 
he was driven forth from the light of day, and henceforth concealed himself in dark hiding-places, flying always alone and at night. Those who practice deceit must expect to be shunned. THE CHARCOAL BURNER AND THE FULLER A charcoal burner carried on his trade in his own house. One day he met a friend, a fuller, and entreated him to come and live with him, saying that they should be far better neighbors, and that their housekeeping expenses would be lessened. The fuller replied, The arrangement is impossible as far as I am concerned. For whatever I should whiten, you would immediately blacken again with your charcoal. Like will draw like. THE BULL AND THE GOAT A bull, escaping from a lion, entered a cave which some shepherds had lately occupied. A he-goat was left in it, who sharply attacked him with his horns. The bull quietly addressed him, But away as much as you will. I have no fear of you, but of the lion. Let that monster once go, and I will soon let you know what is the respective strength of a goat and a bull. It shows an evil disposition to take advantage of a friend in distress. THE LION AND THE MOUSE A lion was awakened from sleep by a mouse running over his face. Rising up in anger, he caught him, and was about to kill him, when the mouse piteously entreated, saying, If you would only spare my life, I would be sure to repay your kindness. The lion laughed and let him go. It happened shortly after this that the lion was caught by some hunters, who bound him by strong ropes to the ground. The mouse, recognizing his roar, came up and gnawed the rope with his teeth, and, setting him free, exclaimed, You ridiculed the idea of my being able to help you not expecting to receive from me any repayment of your favor, but now you know that it is possible for even a mouse to confer benefits on a lion. No one is too weak to do good. THE HORSE AND THE ASS A horse, proud of his fine trappings, met an ass on the highway. The ass, being heavily laden, moved slowly out of the way. Hardly, said the horse, can I resist kicking you with my heels. The ass held his peace, and made only a silent appeal to the justice of the gods. Not long afterward, the horse, having become broken-winded, was sent by his owner to the farm. The ass, seeing him drawing a dung cart, thus derided him, Where, O oh boaster, are now all thy gay trappings? Thou who art thyself reduced to the condition you so lately treated with contempt. THE OLD HOUND A hound who in the days of his youth and strength had never yielded to any beast of the forest encountered in his old age a boar in the chase. He seized him boldly by the ear, but could not retain his hold because of the decay of his teeth, so that the boar escaped. His master, quickly coming up, was very much disappointed, and fiercely abused the dog. The hound looked up and said, It is not my fault, master. My spirit was as good as ever, but I could not help mine infirmities. I rather deserve to be praised for what I have been than to be blamed for what I am. No one should be blamed for his infirmities. THE CROW AND THE PITCHER a crow, perishing with thirst, saw a pitcher, and, hoping to find water, flew to it with great delight. When he reached it, he discovered to his grief that it contained so little water that he could not possibly get at it. He tried everything he could think of to reach the water, but all his efforts were in vain. At last he collected as many stones as he could carry, and dropped them one by one with his beak into the pitcher, until he brought the water within his reach, and thus saved his life. Necessity is the mother of invention. THE ASS EATING THISTLES An ass was loaded with good provisions of several sorts, 
which in time of harvest he was carrying into the field for his master and the reapers to dine upon. By the way, he met with a fine large thistle, and being very hungry, began to mumble it. And while he was doing so, he entered into this reflection. How many greedy epicures would think themselves happy amidst such delicate viands as I now carry? But to me this bitter, prickly thistle is more savory and relishing than the most exquisite and sumptuous banquet. Let others choose what they may for food, but give me, above everything, a fine, juicy thistle like this, and I will be content. Every one to his taste. One man's meat is another man's poison, and one man's poison is another man's meat. What is rejected by one person may be valued very highly by another. End of section 3